Hey guys, welcome to the first video. Um, this one is going to be talking about solubility, and the ones after this one will go uh, into boiling point, and then after that we can go through IR mass spec, and I'm just going to group um, solubility, boiling point, and all the spectroscopy stuff you'll be doing throughout the semester into one um, unit on Oscar, one review section. All right, so let's get started here. So what I did is I just put one of these questions um, from, I think this was from an old exam, right on, uh, right here, and we're going to go through this to help us explain, to help you guys understand how solubility works, all right? And there's a, a few general concepts to understand about solubility. So the main thing that you need to understand when you're being asked a question about solubility is it's uh, dealing with something called intermolecular forces, okay? And that's inter. So intermolecular forces mean the forces between two molecules, so between A and B, not within A, right? So if I had some functional group with an alcohol on compound A and on, also on compound A, I have um, some sort of, uh, I don't know, carbonyl, doesn't really matter. We're not talking about in the interactions between the alcohol and the carbonyl of A. We're talking about the interactions between A and B, okay? Intramolecular forces would be within the one molecule, okay? So there are a few types of interim molecular forces. Um, some molecules have certain ones, some don't. So the one that's shared among all of them, they're called van der Waals. Okay, van der Waals are London dispersion forces. So this is present in all atoms and all molecules. All right, and it's the um, and so what this does is it can uh, create something called an induced dipole or a temporary dipole. So you guys understand the concept of a dipole. So if I had this methyl here and this NH2, we know that the nitrogen is more electronegative. So there's a permanent dipole in that direction, all right, because of the nitrogen's electronegativity. Um, van der Waals, we don't, ha uh, we don't have a permanent dipole. We're talking about um, something like between carbon atoms, stuff like that, and temporary shifts of the electrons you can make one of the carbon atoms in a carbon carbon bond more positive the other one a little bit more negative okay so that's what van der waals are and so they're present in everything um another key uh interaction is dipole dipole right so like i said if we have uh these dipoles so this i showed it in one molecule right a permanent dipole so what i can do now is show you how it looks between the molecules This is going to be slightly negative. And so what's going to happen is um, if we're in water, right, and the nitrogen is slightly negative, it'll be closer to the hydrogen because hydrogen is partially positive and the oxygen is partially negative on a water molecule, right? Um, and so, yeah. So they had these uh, dipoles, all right? So that would have been a dipole-dipole interaction. Um, now, one key thing about water and um, any compound that has oxygens or nitrogens uh, or fluorines with hydrogens on them is the idea of hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is not what it sounds like in the fact that I call this a hydrogen bond. That is not what we call a hydrogen bond. Okay, Hydrogen bonds are the intermolecular forces between two compounds, right? And we use hydrogens for this. So what, I, what what does this look like? So we have two H2O molecules. Okay. The oxygen of an H2O is partially negative. Right? There's more of the electrons on the oxygen. On the hydrogens of the of the water, they are partially positive. All right. So this is not a full charge, it's only a partial charge, right? These are dipoles. And so what happens is when you have a hydrogen on an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, we have the possibility of hydrogen bonding, all right? So we create these dipoles between the oxygen or if it was a nitrogen or fluorine, 
right, to give the hydrogen a partially positive charge. So partial positive charges are attracted to partial negative charges, okay? So what's going to happen is the hydrogen of one water molecule will be forming a hydrogen bond between the oxygen of another water molecule, all right? That is what a hydrogen bond looks like. And the same happens for this one. Right? And so that can happen. So that's what a hydrogen bond looks like. Now, when we talk about hydrogen bonds, we have to think of two categories. So we have hydrogen bond donors, we have hydrogen bond acceptors. Okay? So if we look at water again, right, it has hydrogen atoms on the oxygen. So this water molecule is forming a hydrogen bond with that oxygen. It is donating the hydrogen to form the hydrogen bond. So this right here is a hydrogen, bo hydrogen bond donor. Okay, so like this OH group almost is a hydrogen bond donor. Okay, what does it mean to, to be a hydrogen bond acceptor? Well, right here, we see how this oxygen right here is getting a hydrogen bond, bond formed to it. So it is accepting the hydrogen bond from another hydrogen. So that makes it a hydrogen bond acceptor. Okay, so you can see that water can behave as both a donor and an acceptor. All right. And so that is a, what the idea of hydrogen bonds. Okay. And the next IMF I'm going to cover is the ionic interactions. All right. So ionic interactions are when you have an actual charge on your compound. So if I drew this, right, put H2O, remember that hydrogen, so the oxygen has a partial negative, hydrogen is a partial positive, and we can see that the oxygen of this carboxylic acid after it was depronated, also called a carboxylate, is not just partially uh, negative, it's full-blown negative, okay? So this has an actual full negative charge, whereas before we were talking about partial charges. So that negative charge is much stronger. So now, water is super, super attracted here. These are have a very, very strong interaction, that partial partially positive hydrogen is very attracted to that negative oxygen, okay? So that's even stronger. So what do we, um, how do we rank these IMFs? What's the strongest, right? Um, because the stronger the IMF, uh, the more soluble you will be, okay? So that's the thing you need to keep in mind, that the stronger your IMF uh, or intermolecular forces, the, the more soluble and the more, um, well, I'll mention that later on, but the more soluble you will be and also you will be more, um, you would have a higher boiling point, okay? So the weakest is a London dispersion force. Every compound has that, okay? Then it would go to a dipole-dipole force. Right, so these are the forces between polar molecules. Hydrogen bonding is uh, a type of dipole-dipole interaction. All right. Then we have something called ion dipole, which is pretty much what we showed here. We had one compound with an ion. We had another one that wasn't wasn't ionic, but it had a dipole. All right. And the last type would have been ion-ion interactions. Right, that's if I had two ions which would have looked like this. Um, if I drew Na+, plus, which now has a full positive charge next to that full negative charge, that is extremely strong. That's a um, that's an ion-ion interaction, right? So now that we have those out of the way, now we're gonna think about this example, okay? So let's see, just making some room. So let's see what we have here. We have 
three compounds, um, and they're asking us to arrange them to increasing solubility in water. Okay, so we're surrounded by water molecules in these compounds. So on the left, we have a ketone. Well, let's start with that. We're going to talk about the interactions on the ketone. All right, so the ketone, and we have again water. Uh, let me draw the actual water molecule. So, the ketone has one in this version forces, just like every compound. It has dipole-dipole interactions because of the carbonyl. Okay, the carbonyl has a dipole-dipole interaction. Now, um, looking, because remember, we're looking at this in the context of water. We need to think about something called hydrogen bonding again. All right. This carbonyl is in resonance with that carbon. And in general, it's already more electronegative. So the carbonyl has a partial negative charge. Remember that um, the oxygens have a partial positive. Now the carbonyl does not have hydrogens on the oxygen itself, but it can be a hydrogen bond acceptor right, of the water. So that increases the solubility. Plus, it's got the dipole-dipole interactions. That also increases it. So if one in this version here, dipole, dipole, H bond, acceptor. It's not a donor. And it doesn't have any ionic interactions because uh, there's no charge. So let's look now at, um, let's go to structure two. Okay. So looking at structure two, and then actually at the same time, we should really look at structure three. So we see right off the bat, these two have ionic charges, ionic interactions, okay? Because remember, this is in water. Uh, change that. We're in water. So we know that there's, um, and we see that we have charges, and we know that that's extremely, extremely strong interactions. So um, we know that that is definitely going to be, both of them are definitely going to be stronger than the ketone. Okay, they're more going to be they're going to be more soluble because of the more uh, the stronger IMF interactions with water. Now, what about amongst themselves? All right, how does this work? So, one thing that I didn't mention and that is uh, going to be a little bit different. We talked about solubility, right, and that the stronger your IMF interactions with water, the strong the more soluble you'll be. The concept works the same for boiling point in that the stronger your IMF interactions are within your between your molecules, the higher your boiling point. Now this is where they differ, and of course I'll make a boiling point video for this too. The longer your the longer your chain is, right? So you can see we have two carbons here. Verse one, two, three, four, five carbons. Right. The longer your chain is, the uh, lower your boiling point will be. Okay, so the longer the chain, the lower your boiling point. Now the way, uh, sorry, not the oh man, not boiling point. Sorry, the longer your chain, the lower your solubility will be. Now the way I remember this is think about from your bio classes uh, how um, your cell membrane works. Right, we have some polar group at the head. And we have these long chain of fatty acids, straight chains, right? These straight chain fatty acids are nonpolar, all right? Water is a polar molecule, and there's an idea called um, like dissolves like, in that compounds that are similar in properties will prefer to mix with each other. So this nonpolar carbon chain does not like the polar water molecule, all right? So the longer your chain is, the lower your solubility is. Now, another thing is the more branching you have, right? If we have branching now, 
that's going to increase our solubility. So by branching, I mean you have to have them as substituents off the parent chain. So comparing this molecule versus this, this molecule, the one with the branching is going to have a actually um, Wait, is it I kept the molecular weight the same, just shifted the carbons. So the branching is going to have more solubility. All right. So remember, increasing IMFs increase the um, boiling point and solubility, but where they differ is in terms of branching and the long chains. If you have branching, your solubility goes up, boiling point goes down. If you have a long chain, straight parent chain, your solubility goes down, boiling point goes up. Okay, so um, talking about the forces on these two, we have London, we have dipole, dipole, now what about H bonding? So here's the thing, water is attracted to the carbonyl, right, we talked about that for the ketone. We said that it has ionic interactions as well, right? Because water definitely likes that. And this O minus can also form a hydrogen bond um, to another water molecule. So, like if I put this here, that was bad. We form that right there. Okay, so the carboxylate is both a donor and an acceptor of hydrogen bonds. All right. Oh, sorry, not a donor. It is just an uh, it is just an acceptor. The carboxylate itself does not have hydrogens to use, so it's a donor, but in two places. So H bond acceptor two places, and the same thing here. H bond Scepter, because it doesn't have hydrogen to use it, it takes it, the hydrogen of the, of the water comes in and donates hydrogen bond. Two places. Okay, so the difference between them is the chain. In one, the chain is much longer. Okay, and we talked about how the longer your chain is, the lower your solubility will be. So between this one and this one, the one on the right has the higher solubility. We said that the ketone has the lowest and this one in the middle had, you know, would have been in the middle. So our answer was A for this one. Okay. So that's how we go through solubility questions. The next video will be on boiling point. Now this, the boiling point video won't go as in depth in terms of IMF interactions because I did that in this video. So I'm just gonna slap an example right there and we can just go through it. And through that, we'll go with the IMFs as well. Hope this video helped you guys out and I'll see you in the next one.